Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bharat, you're watching iGyan. In this video, we're gonna talk about 3D printing, some of the capabilities that we've achieved in 2021, some of the formats that are available, some of the filaments and the types of 3D printing that are available. And then I'm gonna talk about this 3D printer that I just got about a month ago and have been experimenting with and been printing all of these things, apart from some other things. And we'll talk about my successes and some of my failures. So let's quickly get into it. There's gonna be more videos coming up for this series. So make sure you subscribe to iGAN. And if you enjoy 3D printing or if you enjoy this video, don't forget to smash the like button. Let's quickly get into it. I first heard about 3D printing about 10 years ago when one of my friends uh, purchased a MakerBot. Now this is one of the first 3D printers. It was more a DIY construct yourself 3D printer. And here we are 10 years later and we have a machine like this. Now this is the Flash Forge Guider 2S. This is a fully pre-built 3D printer. This is a fairly mid-range product with respect to some of the price range that is available. So you can call this a mid-pro or a early pro printer or this is more than an amateur level printer, but it's definitely not a extremely pro level printer. So some of the few things that I really enjoy about this printer is that the touchscreen is really clear and the fact that this has an internal memory as well. So you can have your files stored in here and you can print off of them directly if you want to again, make a successful print, uh, reprint it again. You can do that directly from the printer. You don't have to go looking for your file, have it sent over Wi-Fi or whatever. You can also transfer files over USB or over LAN. It does support that as well if you don't want to use Wi-Fi. Uh, you can also send your files over cloud. So if you do connect this to Polar 3D, you can not only monitor your prints, uh, you can send files via there, start your uh, print processes, stop them, pause them, etc. Printers now start in India as low as 10,000 rupees. So if you do really want to get into 3D printing, you can get in on it really cheap, which is absolutely fantastic. We'll leave links to some of these uh, really popular printers in the description below so you can go check them out. Be sure to read up more about them because there's a lot of build process involved in setting up those printers because they come apart as kits and you have to assemble them and get them going. So if you're ready to go through that effort, uh, go check these out. So there are several types of 3D printing technologies. There's FDM, there's SLS, and there's also laser sintering. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we're going to focus more on uh, this type of printer, which is an FDM. What this basically does is that there is a filament which gets heated from uh, the extruder with the nozzle. It pushes out layer by layer of filament, therefore making a print in a three-dimensional format. Now, I can get into more detail about this, but I'm sure you'll find a more technical uh, detail of this on YouTube. So you can go search for it because I'm going to focus more on uh, what we've been able to do and more practical use case scenarios. So the reason why I wanted to get into 3D printing was more functional prints versus just hobby prints. So I can print uh, things like uh, small miniatures of things. I can print uh, fun little quirky logos and things like that. But uh, in reality, what I wanted to, to try 3D printing for was to actually find functional uses for it. And I immediately found a use case when the tension knob of uh, the microphone boom that I used broke off. So I was able to print a hex socket wrench and attach to the top of that screw and uh, was able to tighten it and hence keep my microphone arm still functioning. So this printer has a large build volume. So you get 280 mm of clearance, which is great. That means you can have really tall prints. Uh, but you also get lots of nozzles with this, so depending on what kind of prints you want. And if you're printing carbon fiber, there's a specialized nozzle for that. Uh, so you get a bunch of nozzles inside the box. Another thing that is really important for 3D printing is filaments. So filaments are now readily available. I, in fact, after I started 3D printing, indulged and purchased, I think, too many filaments. As far as filaments are concerned, some of these filaments do absorb moisture from the environment, especially in India where the moisture levels are really high. The humidity levels are really high. Uh, the filaments can absorb moisture and that can result in failed prints as well. So you wanna make sure you keep your filaments in a dry box or in a dry cabinet to keep the moisture levels low so that you can print much better. But once you get into this hobby or if you get into this professionally, there is really no end to how much filament you can get because not only is it exciting to build something of your own, but it is even more exciting to see it come to life. We've experimented with a few filaments. So we've tested out PLA, PETG. I've also tested out TPU, ABS, and uh, we also have carbon fiber filament and some of the other filaments uh, that are available, even metal bonded filaments are available now. 
And so you can print some really interesting products and you can have some really sturdy designs as well as objects made from filaments, uh, sort of designed, created right in front of your eyes in your own house or office, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, understanding filaments, the types of filaments there are, is really crucial for 3D printing. So if you get a printer like this, this basically can print all of the commercially available filaments. So we've been able to print PLA, PETG, uh, ABS, ASA, and uh, TPU on this printer very successfully. And uh, that is because this has a wide variety of things with respect to the hot end, uh, the extruder, and the build plate. So the build plate can be heated up to quite a lot, which is required for ABS. And the extruder as well as the hot end supports higher uh, temperature filaments like ABS and ASA, which do require a higher degree temperature to be extruded properly. So those things are important. And apart from that, you will need a closed chamber uh, for uh, certain filaments, which is why I chose this printer. It's fairly easy to use. And uh, the software it comes with is also pretty uh, direct. It works on both PC as well as Mac. I would have liked to get something that works across iOS devices as well as Android devices, but you can use third-party applications if you want to send prints over the internet. This is also Wi-Fi supported. So once you connect it to your router, you're basically connected to this printer at all times. So there is a camera on this device, but at this moment, uh, the functionality doesn't work really well because secure video is required to now stream on on modern browsers. And while this does stream the video through Polar 3D or Polar Cloud, it doesn't work very well and only you get screenshots or snapshots of your print and not direct live feeds as it was intended originally. Hopefully a firmware update can fix that. And they do push out firmware updates quite frequently. Um, the company is pretty good with offering support. I reached out to them for a few issues and they were happy to resolve them quite quickly. Apart from that, uh, this printer is also readily available. And it, you, if you don't wanna go for something which is in this price bracket, uh, the same company, Flash Forge, makes a lot of other printers which are relatively much more affordable. And you can also get printers that do have dual extruders which is uh, really useful if you want to get multicolored prints or dual filament prints. So if you want to print partially with PLA and partially with another uh, filament like PETG, for example, uh, you can do that as well. So in this video, let's talk about some of the things that I've printed. Uh, so I found these boxes. These are rugged style boxes uh, on Thingiverse. I'll leave a link to those in uh, the description, but these are for AA batteries as well as AAA batteries. Uh, some of these prints have come out really nice. In fact, if I found this on like an Amazon or something, I would pay to buy a box like this. This is that well built. It's solid. This one holds <laughs> 12 AAA batteries, something that I think most people need, even if you're using rechargeables or regular batteries. Uh, for some reason, this evil box holds 15 batteries. I don't know how and what joy you get out of 15 batteries, but this holds 15 batteries. And then if you want to go a little more, with respect to the kind of work we do, you have something that does hold 48 batteries here as well. So I went all out, I experimented. Now, printing with the 3D printer is not as simple as taking a print on a regular printer because printing with the 3D printer requires patience. It requires um, the ability to accept failure because you will have a lot of failures. Even with this print, I had to print at least six, seven times and uh, fail before I could get the bottom part to print properly. And even after it printed properly, it is warped on one side. So on one side, you can't really fit batteries uh, while you can on the other side. So you have to really go through successes and failures and there are things that fail. So your printer bed needs to be leveled. Luckily, this printer has an auto leveling mechanism inbuilt into it and it's really easy to level the bed or the platform on which you print. And you also get a magnetic build plate. So it's easy to remove your prints. It's easy to clean the plate as well. It's got a non-stick style sticker on it, but it does adhere to fresh prints. So if you have something hot coming out of the hot end, it does stick onto this well. We had pretty good success with uh, some ABS prints as well. But for example, this hammer, I failed twice with this hammer. I've not been able to print it since, uh, but this hammer, it start, started to delaminate uh, halfway through. So I stopped this print and then I went through with this other print. So this hammer takes about eight to nine hours to print. And in this, you can see that at the end, it started to warp out and uh, the overall shape of the hammer, even though the parts that have printed have come out really nice. And if it would have printed fully, you would have looked at this and gone like this is something that is mass manufactured and not something that has been 3D printed. If you look at the parts that have failed, 
versus the parts that have not failed, there's a massive difference. So if you do get a successful print, it looks really good. So this is a good example of a fully successful print. This is printed in PLA, and this is basically the same thing as this without a cover on it. So this is basically a battery holder. So this is like a battery tray. But the finish on this, I showed this to my father and he saw it and he was like, this is really cool. And then I told him that I 3D printed this and he was like, wow, this is even cooler now. So I built, I printed out some of these boxes. I also got one for 18650 batteries. This is a revolver style box. So you open this up. This looks like a part of a revolver. It looks like it's loaded, but this is actually a battery box. So that's cool. And then I printed these brackets. Uh, these are also cool. I thought I'll show these off as well. Uh, these are for fans and I've, I've sort of put two fans in it here. And uh, this part goes here. So this holds the fan from the middle. These are computer fans, 120 mm, and you can put as many as you want. So I built these brackets uh, for some custom builds that I'm doing, uh, which will also be out on the channel. So you should subscribe for that. If you haven't already done that, make sure to have the bell notification turned on if you haven't already done that. We also have some other things that we tested out. So we tested out some flexible prints uh, with a case for the iPhone 13. Uh, this also failed first, but then we finally got the final print. It fits really well. Again, there were some issues with the filament that I was using, uh, but uh, I'm gonna try this again with another filament. You can see you can sort of clean this up. You can have the threads clean out and then the case actually works really well and it fits on the phone really, really well. I also printed a case for the iPhone 13 Pro Max with a PETG and this actually got stuck on the phone. I had to rip it off. This print was also a pretty long print and then eventually I had to break off the cover to pull it off the phone, which was really annoying, but the cover printed really well. I've had some fun with this. If you want to get into 3D printing, I'll leave a link to some of the 3D printers we recommend apart from this printer, which I really like. I think this is a really good printer. The fact that it is enclosed, the fact that it supports a wide variety of filaments is uh, really nice. Oh, by the way, I also printed out these uh, chambers. These are to hold your filament. This is actually made by another YouTuber who is only a 3D printing channel. I'll have a link to his video in the description below. Uh, the problem was that these boxes are different from what he gets wherever he is. So I had to build a platform at the bottom to make sure this fits in. So if you guys want information on this as well, let me know in the comment section below. I'll, I'll tell you what I use to, uh, which box this is. I'll give you a link to that as well as the bottom part. I can give you the print file for that if you want to print it out. Again, like I said, I'm going to be testing out this printer more in depth in our future videos. So you can stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team Again, This has been Bharat. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.